Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I'm super excited to be scrutinizing another video for you today. This time we are going to STB 2020 in Beijing. This is the very first time I'm judging a competition in Beijing, China. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So they look like they have a nice little warm up. And. Okay, it's a live band too. This is good. This is good. It's a good sign when you see a live band at a competition like this. It means you've got a real good culture and, and people loving the music. Okay. So far what I'm seeing, everyone appears to have some really good technique and I, I hope that I'll get a chance to see some real individuality, which tends to be very difficult in the Lindy Hop community. So we will see what happens here uh, to see if we can get that balance I tend to look for. All right. We got a very active crowd too. This crowd uh, is really going to add some energy. I can already tell. Can already tell. So who do we got? Blue and Lynn. Come on. You know, it's also good to see the contestants cheering each other on. That's really cool. Stan and Lucy from Shanghai. All right, there's the first aerial. It's a pecking. <laughs> Luoe and Yezi. I hope I'm saying everybody's names correctly. I doubt it though. Okay. All right. Oh, surprise Ariel. Those are good. Misha and Mina from Guangxu. I'm not sure how to say that place. More aerials. Wazi and Wanyan. They, they may be fan favorites. The audience is going wild for them. Aerials, aerials. Zilong and Ji from Shanghai. Everybody's got some solid Charleston. This has been so competitive right now. People are coming out with aerials. This is good. Kyle and Yuan Yuan. Yes. Yes. 
There we go, some swing outs, folks. Yes. There we go. Okay, this looks like it might be round two. All right. This is where it gets really close. Because usually you have less time on the second set. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Her, her leg came out on that swing out. That was beautiful. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> Yes, more aerials. Nailing it again. See this couple, the green couple's on the radar. You gotta watch them. Boom. Again. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Why not? Yes, there we go. Some creativity, folks. Ah, oh, <laughs> yes. Boom. Boom, another. Very good. Very good. <laughs> oh, the band's not ready. There we go. Swing up. This is the point where you try to do anything you can to get attention. It's awesome. Yes. Very good. Very, very good, guys. So much energy. Yes. Guys, I got to tell you, this was really entertaining for me to watch it was the very first time i've seen a competition like this in china this is so cool and what i see is the same thing that i see in most places around the world people respond to swing music the same way they love it there's just there's just this raw feeling that we all have and we can't explain it to people who don't do swing dancing but it's amazing that i can't even speak chinese um but yet at the same time i can speak this language that we all love so much and i think that is amazing. 
um, watching this video footage, knowing that they love the same thing I love and they're doing it just as well as anybody else. That's what made this one hard to judge. It made this one really tough to judge. And I, I can tell you right now, I don't have three couples. I don't have three couples. I, I have I have two couples that I would say um, merit attention. There, there's there's let me first get to uh, the couple I thought that really was second place for me, and and that couple um, I want to make sure I don't butcher everybody's names. Uh, Luang Wei and Yezi. What I liked about their dancing. Uh, clearly, when I judge competitions, you guys know by now, I look at the three main things. And if every dancer can do the three main things, then we need to go into more new, nuanced qualifications of why someone is better than the other dancer. And of course, a lot of those things are subjective, but they relate primarily to the dancer, uh, how they move and how they do it well with the music. There's a connection there that determines how well I judge them. So. In this case, this couple, they had the timing, they had the control of the technique, and they had a little bit of creativity. There are two main suits that I like were the timing and the control. So obviously they come out here with some energy, some silliness. You gotta have some silliness in Lindy Hop. That's kind of what, what it's about. And then they showed me, okay, I better pay attention to their technique. I don't see her upstaging him and him upstaging her. They're working as two separate bodies coming together to form one body, but they both are moving in swing time in a way that looks not choreographed, but that's great. What I love best on that set is they, they surprised me with that aerial at the very end. See, it sometimes every aerials are so popular in competition that a lot of people can do them and the audience can see them coming and, and, for some reason, the effect is taken away when you start seeing it over and over. So it takes a little bit more effort to be able to make those areas, aerials make sense um, and make an impact in a way that makes you stand out. And so they did that for me on the end of that set. The second thing I like too about them is in their second set, you can see right here as they come out, I finally get to see some swing outs. This is the thing that I... I wish they would have done more. I wanted to see a little bit more swing outs, a little bit more of their personality doing basic swing movements. But but this alone, them doing their campiness, nailing some of the traditional jazz steps, and throwing in so many aerials, it merited a really good second place. I really like that. Yeah, they look, again, another aerial on top of that. So it's one thing to be able to do the aerial, but it's it's an entirely different thing to do an aerial in a competition and nail it in front of an audience with lights and you know cameras on you that capture footage that will be forever floating on the internet. So big shout out to them for that. So for me, they were second place. The first place couple, this was different. This was tough. I have to give it to Kyle and Yuan Yuan. They were my favorite. And the reason is, is they had the ability to control the technique, much like the second place couple. They had some incredible timing that I want to illustrate here, but then they had some creativity. So let's take a look at their set. You can see right here, um, when they come out, they immediately get busy right into some Charleston technique. And as you can see, their vertical bouncing is they're mirroring each other. They don't look clunky and boom, after all that complication, they go right into some swing out so I can kind of see their personality. That for me was the icing on the cake. Then of course they, they finish things out with some aerials. I thought, okay, they don't just have the technique, they don't just have the timing, but they know how to put those things together and balance it, balance their artistic choices with some basic Lindy Hop. Because you can forget sometimes to just do a swing out and end up making your movements and your sets too convoluted where people can't really see your personality. And they did not fall for that trap. Okay, Their second set I like too because, again, swing outs. I could see them coming out doing that. That right there where he stuck his foot out and she grabbed it, that was the icing on the cake. That was the one move for me that said, okay, this couple's unique. Plus them doing a lot of their breaks here with the timing of the music. Sometimes that's just hard to nail. 
And then they ended it, of course, with the icing on the cake. They nailed two aerials in time. <laughs> Folks, that's hard to do. It's not easy. And so big shout out to them. For me, they were the winners. They nailed the timing. They nailed the creativity. And they had some control of the technique in a way. It matched everybody else's. But that one thing that put them over the edge of everybody else was the leg move. It's the little things, guys. It's the creativity that makes the audience go, okay, they're different. There's something that's different there. Now, as a judge, of course, my critical eye has to be on. I'm looking at the control of the technique, number one. We are craftsmen because we're responsible for preserving Lindy Hop, right? We didn't create it. It's been willed to us to take care of. So I want to see some basic Lindy Hop, and they nailed that. They did more swing outs than any other couple. That makes me proud to see they haven't abandoned the main thing. But then they showed me a little bit of themselves. We're not just craftsmen where we just preserve all the moves from the past and call that Lindy Hop. No, we've got to think about what the dancers did in the past. They had a, a basic language of Lindy Hop, but each artist, each dancer had something to say personally. And I think that's the spirit that we are kind of missing in today's culture in Lindy Hop. You have to know that there's a balance. For me, it's 60-40. 40% of your art should be preservation, showing me you can do those movements that have come from the past. The other 60% really I, is something that is supposed to be about you. I want to see what you can do with this artistic dance that can make an impact on dancers 50 to 60 years from now. What's your creativity, all right? So that's what I'm looking for. That couple nailed it the most for me, and they had the respectable balance that makes me say, as a judge, yeah, they deserve first place. So. What did you guys think? Let me know who you thought should have been the winner of this competition. You guys have heard my big fat mouth and my opinion. I like to tell you not just who I thought, but I like to tell you why and how I like to judge things. Normally, we don't get this type of level of judgment when you go to events because normally we judge. We give the little um, sheets off to whoever's going to tally them up, and then we go about social dancing. So I hope you guys appreciate this where you can get some context on how one judge you know, likes to put it out there. So if you guys aren't competing, I encourage you, start competing. It is a very beneficial thing to your dancing. I know when I first started, I didn't like competing because I came from the world of choreography. I was really interested in social dancing. I didn't understand how it worked where people can just get together and just start creating stuff and, and you can do something different with every partner. For me, that was more fascinating. I wasn't really impressed by the choreography. But I'll tell you, when you do choreography and you do a little bit of social dancing in these competitions in front of an audience, it pressurizes everything that you're doing to stretch you. And so if you feel, find yourself sometimes getting nervous, you know, dancing in front of an audience and you've got some really good ideas, but yet what for whatever reason, every time you get out there and you try to do your ideas in time in front of an audience, you mess up. That's a sign you need to compete. You need to get yourself used to being in front of an audience of people so that you can get the nervousness off of you and your real potential can come out. And so I remember that feeling of being nervous, but I'll tell you, you know, in hindsight, it was totally worth doing it. So I encourage you, start competing. If you guys aren't having swing dance yet, you should do it. It's not hard. Jump into a lesson. You could do it. Um, I'm not sure what the restrictions are there in Beijing, but go out there. Take some swing dance lessons. It's so much fun. You don't know what you're missing out on. If you want to get a head start, check out some of my free courses below. You can learn basically how swing dancing works. It really is a, a complicated concept, but it it's simple. And it, it the, the reason it's difficult is because it takes a while to process it, to mature, like riding a bike or skating. It, it, it just You need to have a simple way of being able to understand what it is that you need to work on over time. And so we've broken that down so that you guys can feel empowered to be able to start swing dancing with confidence. So um, if I don't see you guys uh, comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online, but let me know who you guys thought should have been the winner of this competition. I look forward to hearing your thoughts below. Take care.